So if we look at consumer electronics and entertainment, screen's getting bigger, resolutions are getting higher, we've got 3D TV, we've got increasingly good surround sound. If we look at computer games, the graphics are becoming so much better, the experience is becoming more real. I think in a hundred years, we're going to have to say that entertainment is almost going to become fully immersive, such that maybe you don't just sit down and watch TV anymore, maybe you're actually involved in that drama. You can experience any battle from history, or you can experience any digital fantasy you might have via the devices in your home. Kind of experience, similar to dreaming, right? You know, when you're there, you're, you're in the situation, it's all happening to you. I think that's what consumer electronics is going to head towards, providing that experience on demand in a way that people want. There's, there's a lot you could do with uh, an immersive shared experience. Just the simple business of staying in touch with people who no longer live close to you. You can imagine playing a game together online or even just being in a virtual environment together in each other's living rooms, if you see what I mean. You know, I've got friends on the other side of the Atlantic. You know, we can literally have a dinner party together in an immersive experience without having to jump on a plane. I have one comment about I think the idea of sharing a dinner party across the, the Atlantic sounds quite nice, but we're going to have to find technology to not only share the sound and the image, because I don't think that's enough to really fully immerse ourselves. Mm. We need feelings, we need the touch, we need the smell, um, and that currently is doesn't exist. Yeah, I think that's a really interesting point to make. We talked about the fully immersive entertainment, but we haven't really considered yeah. things like touch and smell. Now, you know, there are some technologies that people are working on um, where you can basically, maybe you have a chip with 100 or 200 different chemicals on it, and depending on the situation in the movie or in our, in our dinner party example, you can imagine okay, I have my, my TV and projector, but I also have a sense of it smelling the food I'm making over here, sending that smell well, that smell is synthesised on the other side really quickly and vice versa. So perhaps some of those things are going to make the immersive experience you know, truly immersive. In terms of the sort of technology to actually get this sort of televised presence, uh, Fellow's spoken a little bit about potential sort of smell and things like the sort of surround sound or, or, or it exists. Um, the image technology is, is reasonably close. You can get 3D TV. Um, Yes, it would continue to advance, potentially moving to sort of uh, more sort of hol holographic routes or just a very good tracking te uh, um, technique so it really does truly look 3D even when you move. Um, I think one of the big challenges would still be getting sort of things like touch technology to work. Um, I struggle to see how you could get good touch system to work without sort of having like a full suit. Or, or something like that, which um, would a micro machine or something, little actuators. Yeah, yeah, which you could then sort of, you know, actually give, could give you the experience of touch on sort of actually all over your body um, rather than perhaps, or you could have just more limited sort of approaches where you might have like just gloves so you can just touch things and feel things and it feels right. Yeah, so we've, we've talked about complete immersion and sharing dinner parties or complete immersion for games and entertainment, but the question we can ask, uh, even if we can develop touch and smell and temperature con um, feeling, is really can, can this really replace human interaction? At the end of the day, maybe we won't need that um, to be developed, uh, having the technology really pushing people's needs at the end of the day might not be really attractive to people. So I think within the next 100 years or even, even sooner, augmented reality is going to become a very significant part of our lifestyle and our experience. So what I'm talking about here is, is some sort of system, perhaps based on, on glasses or spectacles that you wear, or some other system that's um, positioned in your face. Basically, as I look around this room, I'm going to see information I want. So when I, I look at Matthew, I'm going to see his, his name, perhaps you know the last emails he sent me, that kind of thing. Um, so I'm getting the kind of information I want projected directly onto my vision. Now, I see this first happening in professional markets. If they are. I'm a policeman, I'm walking around, and I've got a map that shows me where the riot's going on, or I look down the street and I immediately pick up my suspect, and that's all relayed directly onto my vision. Now, I'm also seeing that, as I said, just in, in a personal point of view. So basically, almost from birth, we wear these spectacles, or we, we have these implants, or whatever, and we'll start seeing the world covered with an extra layer of information that makes our lifestyle 
easier, richer, more entertaining.